Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, glad you could stop by. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this Persona 5 Take Your Time uh, animation transition reveal thing and hopefully it'll be quite quick and simple. So we're going to be using After Effects as always. So go to After Effects, new project, new composition, we'll call this Take Your Time Tut Tutorial. Uh, Usual things that I use 1920 by 1080. I go 50 frames a second as always because uh, I like to mess around with the time and stuff like that when you get into Premiere or whatever. But you can use uh, like 12 or 24 if you want a more sort of standard hand drawn animation thing. Uh, seven seconds is about uh, a second longer just in case we do need to mess around with things, but the actual animation should be about five or six seconds. And the background will go with red since it's Persona 5 and also been finding out recently that yeah having the background be a completely different uh, colour to the stuff that you're working with is usually quite helpful. So first thing we need to do is take this PNG file of my lovely mug and I'm going to scale that down to 5. And you want a picture, you know you can use whatever you want. But ideally, a PNG file so you've got no background and you don't have to have it in grayscale but this is basically a drawing of myself that I did um, that's in the Persona 5 style and then I've gone back in and I've grayscaled it and I've made the glasses bright white so it's pretty similar to the one that you see in the game of, uh, of the main character. I'm just going to move that over slightly. See so when I put that in the bottom right corner and then we're going to add a new layer, text layer, just under that. Or we'll just do it there. And we'll add the text, so take your time. And we're going to put that under it. And we're just going to move these around just to get the position to where I think it looks right. And also it's going to work with the animation and the mask later on. So I'm just going to rotate this minus 4 because it's a little bit skewed in the game as well. Again, depending on what text you want to use, you might not need to do that. Um, this one that I'm using here is called Dr. Punk. I'll put the link to it in the description. And I want to go with a sort of similar colour to the picture here as well. But again, use white or whatever you want. Now that we've done that, we'll go to this panel. I'm going to turn on motion blur because I like the way motion blur looks, but you don't have to. And I'm going to start with the picture here. So we've got a 25 frames. And now that we've got the 3D on, we can rotate the Y rotation and it's going to do a, a full nice 360 rotation for us. So I'm going to put the keyframe at 25 frames, we're going to easy ease that, then we're going to go about one second, actually no, we'll go to two seconds, and we'll do a 360, then I'll go to 25 frames, we'll hold on there, and then we'll go to four seconds, and we'll just bring it back down to zero, so make sure that you're going back the same way so you're not adding another rotation, you're taking away a rotation because that's again how it looks in the game. And as you can see it goes one way, it holds for a little bit and then it ro rotates back around. So now we need to do the same thing with the text, so go up to the Y rotation, go a frame or a couple of frames just after this and yeah, put the exact same animation on and what will happen is it will be slightly offset from the uh, the picture layer which is again how it looks in the game and yeah personally I think it looks better it looks a little bit more interesting because you've got two different rotation cycles going on and bring that back down to zero and now you've got this if After Effects actually wants to do it so because this is just a preview it's pretty slow but um, in the actual animation it'll look a lot quicker 
and yeah that's it so that's the animation for that done now what we need to do next is add the stroke layer which is going to um, go underneath this layer that we've just animated and also will block out the background so we'll bring that to the bottom I'm gonna add a motion blur to that which will help with the next step that we're gonna do with the masking but again you don't have to put that on so come up here to the top left click up here we'll go across to the top right and it's gonna be quite a thick stroke I'm actually gonna turn that down maybe a little bit and we're going to bring that into the bottom corner here. Oh, we're not going to. Okay, it didn't like me messing around with the stroke there, so I'll do it afterwards. So bring it down to the bottom corner. And what you need to do here is make sure that this stroke doesn't cover up any of this because that'll kind of mess up the masking effect in the next bit. But the stroke's big enough that it should cover up most of it and you can move it around as needed so anyhow you want this um, this shape here so that covers up the entire background so make sure you don't cover up this bit until you get to that last line and also make sure that your line covers up all of the background otherwise a transition isn't going to work properly okay so come out the shape layer we're going to add a trim path open up the trim path bring the end down to zero Add a keyframe at the first frame, we're going to ease ease that. And we'll get to just before 25 because that's about where our animation starts. Bring that up to 100 and then we'll go over to, I think our animation ended at about, we'll go 425 that way. Um, this bit can sort of hang around for a little bit so you can actually look at it. So we'll add start, we'll F9 that again and we'll go to about 5 seconds. And we'll bring that up to 100. So now the the red background's there, but if we took off the background, this is going to be completely um, transparent. So you can then bring in this and then bring in the next scene there. So that's basically most of the work done. So what we need to do now is I'm going to copy this layer. I'm just going to go up to there just to make sure it's definitely copied. You can see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to control A, we're going to pre-compose this layer, call it whatever you want and just, yeah, have the settings as is. Then what I'm going to do is press control V and we're going to mask out this layer. Now, the reason I pre-compose it rather than doing this in this same um, composition as before is I find that when you start using 3D layers and you wanted to mask stuff, it doesn't seem to work too well or it's kind of, it's a lot more tricky whereas when you pre-compose it, there's still that 3D layer in that composition, but when you work with this um, this pre-comp layer here, it's not a 3D layer if that makes sense, so it kind of pushes everything, smushes it down together into one layer, but um, it acts like a 2D layer, so we can easily mask this out, because all we need to do is just turn off that layer, and then simply keep clicking on that one, alpha mat it. And now, the stroke layer is exactly the same that we used in the last one, so we don't even have to animate it. And now what's going to happen is, the stroke layer is going to come in, and it's going to reveal that text. As you can see there, it's part revealed, part not revealed. It's actually a little bit easier to see, I think, on the way out. Possibly. Again there, you can see that the text is, isn't, it's not fading in, it's literally getting masked out, which is exactly what we want. So now, I can actually trim this down to exactly where it is, and that takes off a little bit of your render time. And that's it. So now when you render it, you want to export as you normally would, and just make sure when you go into the lossless part, you turn on the alpha as well, then that means you can have a, um, a transparent background. So, yeah, that's it. Um, like I said, I, I've been using this for quite a lot of projects. I've even used it in some show reels and stuff. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So, that's it. Hope you found this useful. Hope my explanation was adequate. 
And yeah, I hope you get some use out of this. So I, I will be doing some more tutorials in the future. I've had a lot of people asking me for the Persona 5 intro, and I'm still, I'm still dragging my feet with it because I know it's going to be a lot of work. So I'm thinking I'll get these easier ones out of the way, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll work my way up to that one because. I don't really remember how I made it, it was just a lot of trial and error basically, like this one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.